Hi guys, welcome back to the Mina Does Art Stuff YouTube channel. My name is Mina and welcome. Today I am going to be swatching this little Daniel Smith um, Shirley Trevina watercolour palette dot card. Um, so whenever I place an order with Jackson's, if they have these little dot cards in stock, I always order one. Um, they only allow one per customer <laughs> per order and they're only like 10 pence. So it's always a fun way to try out different artists' palettes. And it's a bit random which one you get sent and this time I was sent the Shirley Trevina palette and I've looked her up since and she does some beautiful artwork so I was excited to try these out. So the first colour that I'm swatching here is French Ultramarine. This is um, a granulating watercolour, it's a lovely sort of reddish blue, warm blue and it's made up of PB29. Next up we have Cobalt Teal Blue and Daniel Smith's Cobalt Teal Blue is a lot more green than some other brands but it's beautifully granulating and it is made up of PG50 and this one is set class as being semi-opaque and the French Ultramarine was transparent, sorry. <laughs> um, then we have Cobalt Blue, um, again a really lovely sort of mid-blue, slightly on the warmer side Typically, um, artists tend to have either Cobalt Blue or French Ultramarine on their palette because they're both very similar hues. Um, they're both granulating and Cobalt Blue is made of PB28 and it is classed as being semi-opaque. Then next up we have one of my favourite favorite greens by Daniel Smith and that is Undersea Green. It is made up of three pigments, PB29 which is French Ultramarine, PO48 which is, uh, Daniel Smith call it, a quinacridone burnt orange and PY150 which is nickel azo yellow. It is classed as being semi-opaque, it is granulating and it is a beautifully granulating colour and it in some circumstances depending on the paper and how much water you use you do get some degree of colour separation as well which is nice. Next up we have Green Appetite. Um, this is very similar sort of shade and hue to like a sap green however it has really strong granulation it is semi-opaque it doesn't have any pigment numbers because Daniel Smith class it as a genuine pigment uh, as in it's made from genuine stones however there is some debate about that in the community um, but it does dry and separate and has like some um, like brown separation with this one which is really can be quite interesting next up we have perylene green um, this is a non-granulating colour, it is semi-opaque and it's a really beautiful dark moody sort of green colour and it's made up of PVK31. It is such a dark colour, the actual pigment is classified as a black pigment, so there we go. Next up we have Hansa Yellow Medium which is a beautiful sort of mid-yellow colour. I really like this sort of shade of yellow, it's like one of my favourite sort of warmer, slightly warmer shades of yellow. I, I'm not a huge fan of lemon yellows. Um, this one is classed as being semi-opaque, it's made up of PY97 and it is non-granulating. Next up is Quinacridone Gold and this is kind of like my preferred sort of orange shade as it were. Um, it's a really lovely beautiful rich sort of warm orange. It's um, classified as being granulating however I don't believe it to be. Um, it's made up of PO48 and PY150 and it is classified as being transparent. Then next up we have Nickel Titanate Yellow. This is made up of PY53. It's a re really pale, milky sort of yellow shade. Um, it's classed as being granulating, however with these paler shades it's a bit hard to tell sometimes. And uh, semi-opaque. It's, uh, yeah, it's definitely not my cup of tea personally, but I know some people who really enjoy Nickel Titanate Yellow. Then we have Cadmium Red Scarlet Hue. Now Daniel, Sm Daniel Smith does not carry any true cadmium um, pigments in its line, so all of its cadmium pigments are hues. And this is made up of PY53, PR254, and PY83. So two yellow pigments and a red pigment. It's classed as semi-opaque and non-granulating. Then we have Quinacridone Pink. This is made up of PV42 and it's a beautiful sort of pinky magenta colour. It's classed as being transparent and non-granulating, which I would agree with. And then next up we have Permanent Alizarin Crimson, which we'll get to in a minute. I think, yeah. 
permanent lives in crimson, it is classed as non-granulating, it is made up of PR177, PV19 and PR149. Now PR177 is anthraquinoid red and it apparently has issues with light fastness so there is some debate as to whether or not Daniel Smith's permanent alizarin crimson is actually permanent. It is non-granulating and classified as transparent. Um, then next up we have Imperial Purple. This is made up of PV19 and PV29, so it's an ultramarine and a violet pigment. So PV19 can be a range of different shades, so it's um, hard to know which exact version of PV19 was used in this mix, but it's a beautifully granulating semi-opaque paint. Then we have Quinacridone Magenta, which is made up of PR202. Um, most brands use PR122 for Quinacridone Magenta, but Daniel Smith's version of PR122 is called Quinacridone Lilac. I prefer it to the, to the PR202 version of Quinacridone Magenta just because it's a brighter um, Pig, brighter pigment, brighter paint overall, and that's my preference. Um, but it is a beautiful sort of magenta pink colour. The next up we have the infamous Moon Glow. <laughs> this is made up of PG18, which is Viridian, PB29, French Ultramarine, or just Ultramarine, and PR177, which is that aforementioned anthraquinoid red, which has dubious light fastness issues. It is classed as being transparent and granulating. Um, like I said, this is a beautiful, Moon Glow is a beautiful colour, however, it does have issues potentially with light fastness, so just be aware of that. Then we have Bloodstone by Daniel Smith, which again they classify as a genuine pigment uh, made up of natural minerals, and it's a highly pigment, highly granulating, sort of warm black colour. Then we have Pimentite Genuine, which again, another, according to Daniel Smith, genuine pigment and is a really beautiful, beautifully granulating, semi-opaque, um, like reddish brown color. It's actually a really beautiful hue and there is a bit of color separation when it dries as well. Um, and then finally we have permanent brown, which I actually really like. It's a really nice warm reddish brown. It's a non-granulating, uh, transparent color made up of PBR25. And um, just going back quickly to Moon Glow, if you did want to know a bit more about that pigment, about that colour and its light fastness issues, I will leave a link down to Kimberly Crick's video about Moon Glow and some alternative um, mixes you can do yourself to mix up your own more light fast version if that's something you are interested in learning about. Anyway that's it for this video thank you so much for joining me today i hope you found this interesting and if you do if you did enjoy this video please give it a like and if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe to the channel i would love to have you here um according to my analytics about 60 percent of people who watch my videos aren't actually subscribed so make sure you do if you want to um get a notification every time i post a video so in some close-ups of the different colors and yeah, I hope you enjoy this little bonus video. I'm trying to stick to two videos a week with occasional third video on the weekend when I can. So I hope you enjoy this one and I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.